Clinton. Thank you, Chair. Um, Former Secretary, have you received any guidance or advice or, or received any submissions from FCDO or government lawyers that Israel may be in breach of international humanitarian law? Have you, have you received any ad legal advice from the FCDO or government right. lawyers that Israel may be in breach of international humanitarian uh, law? What I've received is advice as part of this process that I've just described to the Chair, um, and the, the advice then uh, was passed on consistent with that advice, as it were, to the Department of Trade. No, in terms of Israel's actions post-October the 7th, yeah. are you... Okay, let me ask you personally. Yeah. Have you seen any evidence, been made aware of any evidence, or have reasonable grounds to believe that Israel has breached international humanitarian law? No. Well, what I have to do is act on the advice that I'm given, and that advice is based on what we believe is happening. And so we ask a whole series of questions of the Israeli government about individual actions that are brought to our attention. And then we receive advice on that, consider that advice, and then pass it on to the Department of Trade for them to make the decision okay, about I, arms exports. I, I understand so, your relationship with the, the yes, Department of Trade. So, so, but what I'm asking you, yeah. Foreign Secretary, yeah. is have you been made aware or seen any evidence or have reasonable grounds to believe that Israel has breached international humanitarian law? Not you. arms exports. Not, nothing to do with arms exports. This is about the international I've, I've seen lots of things that have been deeply concerning, um, and when I do, I ask advice. And we often, as part of this arms export, we have, formally have to do that, ask advice about uh, whether that is in fact in breach of international humanitarian law. And in, in your assessment as Foreign Secretary, has Israel at any point in its response breached international humanitarian I, law? My job is, is not to make the legal adjudication because it's, I'm not a lawyer. It's for me to consult my lawyers in the department and say, yeah. will you reach a judgment about whether this does breach international humanitarian law based on, as I said, the... Um, the, the, the commitment, the capability and the compliance. Yes, no, no, that takes me yeah. back to my initial yeah. question then. Have your lawyers in the FCDO or in government given you any advice as to whether Israel has breached international human humanitarian law? Because you seem to be saying to us that it has been examined by the FCD so I, and I don't by want to government. sound like I, I know I know what you're asking and I don't want to answer it well I don't want to be difficult I don't want I don't want to give an inaccurate answer and I don't want to you know uh, I've described to you the process because it's a process so of course you see lots of things that you think well is that in line with international is that in line? and so that's a process that they the foreign office has to go through to look at those instances uh, to put questions as part of this process to the Israeli authorities to consider those answers and then to give me the considered advice, given all that, does that mean we think that Israel is in breach of human rights, uh, international humanitarian law? If the answer is yes, one set of advice goes to the Department of Trade. If the answer is no, another set of advice goes. That's the way it works. OK, well, well let, 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 me be, let me take you away from process to more specifics. About two or three minutes ago, an answer uh, a reply to the chair you said, and I quote, one of the things we'd like the Israelis to do is switch the water back on. Now, that says that they turned it off. It says that you recognise they have the power to turn it on. Therefore, isn't turning water off and having the ability to turn it back on but choosing not to, isn't that a breach of international humanitarian law? It's just something they ought to do, in my no, opinion. No, and uh, of course they should do it. Every it, human being would say, yeah. you don't cut people's water supply off. But I'm asking you, in your position as Foreign Secretary, well, I don't, around I, I the mean, point of international yeah. humanitarian yeah. law, if Israel have the power to turn the water back on that they turned off, surely that is a flagrant breach of international humanitarian law. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. My, my view is they ought to switch it on because uh, the north of Gaza, the conflict is now effectively over there, and so getting more water and power into northern Gaza would be a very good thing to do. You don't have to be a lawyer to make a judgment about that. You just have to be a human being. Forgive me, Sir Philip. Under international obligations, do occupying powers have an obligation to provide access to water, yes or no? 
You're, you're asking me a technical Sir legal Philip, question? Sir Philip, I, I'm really, forgive me, you and I have played this dance enough times. We all know that under international law, there is an obligation for occupying powers to provide water. You're asking me a technical question about occupying powers uh, and what their obligations are in international law. I imagine you're correct, Chair, but I'm, I'm also not a, uh, not a lie. I also just would point out... I Philip, don't just, just bear in mind, we want to have... Uh, we've come to such a good place working with you because we have the confidence that you do know these details, and that's what your colleagues say. You know that it's not that you presume I'm correct. That is the duty on an occupying power. Yeah, uh, so, yes. yeah, I think that, I think that is right. Um, so, 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 yes, but I would also add that in answering your questions earlier about occupying... Uh, occupy, occupation. Yeah, I'm not asking you to apply it to Israel. The facts are, though, that they are required to... And, and, and just, Lord Cameron, just to clarify, so you have received no advice at any point from any government lawyer that states that Israel is in breach of international humanitarian law? That's not what I said. No, that's why I'm asking you to clarify. Yes, well, I'm, I'm going to give exactly the same answer all over again, um, uh, which is what my role is, right? I'm not interested in the role, I'm interested in the legal advice you've received. Yes, well, the legal advice I've received is consistent with the fact that we have not changed our export it's um, not about arms exports, it's about international humanitarian law being upheld when it comes to aid, when it comes to way in which airstrikes are being prosecuted, everything else. We're, one question on arms exports, we've, we've moved from them <coughs> in um, any realm, in any respect. So you've never had a piece of paper put in front of you by a foreign office lawyer that says that Israel is in breach of its international humanitarian commitments under international humanitarian law. Um, look, I, 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 the reason for not answering this question, I can't recall every single bit of paper that's been put in front of me. I see, I look at everything. I mean, of course, there are lots of things that have happened where you think, well, surely that is that was something that shouldn't have happened, and uh, and so I don't want to answer that question because. Forgive I, me. In 2013, you were quite happy to say from the dispatch box that war crimes had been committed by the Assad regime when it came to chemical weapons use, and two years later, you were happy to say that Hamas had committed a war crime when they shot rockets into <coughs> Israel. Yeah, well, I do think there's a difference between. You know, using chemical weapons to kill people, and uh, Israel fighting a, a conflict where they're trying to deal with a, a terrorist force that inflicted an appalling attack on it's their country. It's a difference country. in setting or specifics or scale, but not in principle, which was your willingness and ability to determine whether or not international <coughs> law had been broken. I'm, I'm not sure we're going to get a lot further with this. Um, uh, I mean, if you're asking me, if you're asking me, yeah, yeah, no, but if you're asking, am I worried that Israel have ta has taken action that might be in breach of international law because this particular premises has been bombed or whatever? Yes, of course I'm worried about that, and that's why I consult the foreign office lawyers when giving this advice on arms exports. So that's why I don't. So you're, if you put it that way, I'm happy to say yes, of course. Every day I look at what's happened and ask questions about, is this in line with international humanitarian law? Could the Israelis have done better to avoid civilian casualties? Of course I do that. No, we, we have no doubt that you'd ask those questions. It's about the response you've received. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I understand that the question that you want to answer, yeah. but the question that I want to ask is the point, have you received legal advice which says that Israel is in breach uh, of international humanity. The short answer to that is no. But, you, you, but, but I, but, but, but okay. I, 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 well, I want to qualify it instantly because it's not fair on the lawyers because, of course, the lawyers give you lots of advice saying, look, we're worried about this event, that event, this event, that event. We're going to go away. We're going to consult with the Israeli authorities. We're going to ask a bunch of questions. And then we're going to give you considered legal advice, given everything, on the basis of you know, capability, commitment, and everything else. Have they broken international law? So that's why it's not really a yes or no answer. Well, but I, I'm trying to be helpful by sort of the, explaining the how the job works. Okay, I'll, I'll, does, that, I'll, does, that, does that help at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, this is, I think it's as good as we're going to get from you. Can I ask, uh, finally, um, uh, Chair, well, so what assessment have you made of the Israeli ambassador's claim that every school, mosque, and every second house in Gaza has access to tunnels and ammunition? Now, she said that in a television, a television interview, and when pressed on whether that means a complete destruction of Gaza by Israel, she replied, and I quote, do you have another solution? So in your opinion, was she freelancing when she was speaking to that television interviewer, or was she speaking for the Israeli government? I, I don't um, 
yeah. agree with that approach. Um, look, if you're asking me... No, I'm I, not asking you about the approach. I'm asking yeah. about do you think she was speaking to the know. Israeli government I, I, or I, was she freelancing? I, I don't know. I would hope that, that that is not the position of the Israeli government because it's the wrong position. Well, yeah, thank you. Just, just very quickly on this point, and I'm not trying to 